and let's talk now about script best practices. Some of them we've talked through today, some of them we have not, so I wanted to, to add a few as we continue on here. And I, I think that there actually are, are you know so many more, and, and that's why we, ha we do have an intermediate class for this one as well. But I did want to start off with a lot of the more simple best practices, basic ones that you can utilize. And quite frankly, you know, with a lot of the basics, you can get a lot done. I, for the most part, as we said, you should be able to build scripts that have hundreds of, let's say, commands within them. And although it, it may be very complex to remember all of those steps, no one wants to remember that stuff. That 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 is why we script in the first place. No one wants to remember it. <laughs> You're able to then uh, build something that's quite complex and, and useful. And once you quality control it, again, you can run it over and over again. So starting off, I always like to set the safety on and off. Uh, the off would be first at the top, and then you would go to the on button if, or you know, set safety on at the end of the script. And then that way, if you don't want to be in a situation where you're entering uh, or overwriting data by mistake, and, and that's why you have the set safety. However, in a script, you really want it to just run through. And you know, sometimes we have scripts that run overnight because they're they're so the files are so big and there's so many commands taking place so that is one way to make that happen what I like to do is to set a lot of the field and file variables up front in the script and I'm, I'm gonna now jump back to ACL oops sorry as we go here bear with me one second so like we did in the vendor interest tables test set I like to set all of these dialogues obviously up front so that that way it just runs right through. One key note to make is that, and I, I glossed over it a little bit here, is that when you open up a file, excuse me, when you set what the variable is for a file and you're about to select the fields, you need to open that file. So ACL will not be able to select fields from some amorphous table. It needs to know what table you're looking at. So you have to then first open the table, which is what we did here. Then you open it up and then you dialog and select what fields you want. And it's going to select the fields from that table. If you need to do this later, then you you know can and, and open another table. You can then have another dialog to open up the table number two and you know go through it. But a lot of that dialog should happen in the beginning of the scripting. I also do all of my assignments up top here, and then that way all of the you know I probably should have a comment here if I was being really good and say you know the rest will calculate based on user selections slash entry and then that way we know from this point this point up top that's where all my variables are set this point below is where all the you know the fun stuff happens okay let's go back to the slides here now coding in ACL is is perfectly acceptable however coding in a text editor is also a, a very useful thing to do and I utilize something called EditPad Pro I think there's another one out there called Notepad++ and there's probably 50 more out there but what I would suggest you do and I'm just gonna open up EditPad Pro so you can see it EditPad Pro it really has a lot of nicer features to it and without you know going through everything here you, you have well you could even record macros which I never even knew you could do but you can convert things you can do some nice control find you know search for uh, you know that batch and then replace it with something else and it will go through everything what, what also is nice that ACL does not have in its script editor notice how this kind of scrolls out to the right here and you can't read anymore but there is more stuff going on over to the right on the script in in a text editor let's kind of just copy and paste that into the text editor so you could see it notice I do have word wrap within the text editor but if I copy and paste this back into ACL, 
which I just did and you didn't even notice it. <laughs> uh, I did it again just so you could see it. it. It puts it on the one line, you know, so you don't lose any functionality by having it in the text editor. It doesn't, it doesn't create this word wrap situation. But what I find is in ACL, sometimes these, these scripts go out for a far way to the right and it is much more useful to be able to script that right within the, uh, you know, within one view that you can look at and kind of read through. Okay, let's go back to our thing. Commenting with throughout your code, and let let me spend a, a few more minutes on commenting before we we go back and talk about anything else. Okay, at, at the top here we have this basic comment, what it is, but but again when it was created, Dean Brooks helped me out on this one, and uh, helped me with publishing the uh, Pables test set book. Another thing that you might want to say is, well, we made some edits today, and you might want to say, you know, edited by Rich Lanza, 627, or 6712, and then maybe even noting what we did. If, if we made, I don't think I made any changes to it, but let's say, you know, a changed uh, percentage calculation or something like that. And I think to have, you, one probably good way to do it is just to add the comment codes throughout. And the only thing I would do, and I think it does make it look nice, is maybe just add some stars up top. Everybody can kind of see that. And then some stars at the bottom. And then that way you have a nice little uh, version control going on here. Uh, what I find is that it th this edited by calculation or, or entry really saves you down the road when you have various ACL documents and ACL scripts and you need to remember what you were working with. This is a great way to go back to your code and, and take a look at what had been commented, changed, and, and what have you. So let's uh, also go back to our thing. We talked about pause statements. So let me go back into ACL. We had this pause statement here. I like putting them at the beginning to say what you're going to do. And I like putting them at the end, which will also you know, tell you what it, it's done. It's very useful, too, if you're running ACL, say, on another computer and having it run, say, overnight or during the day, a lunch break, whatever, as it's running through a, a, a pretty hard script, as it's doing that, you can essentially just wait until you get your pause statement. And, you know, you just look over and say, ah, it, it finally paused. Now I need to stop and uh, deal with whatever, you know, whatever next step there is in, in the process that I'm working on. There is a way using the notify command of ACL, which I'm not talking about here right now. It takes a little bit of setting up at times for the email, but there is a notify script where it'll even email you when it's done, and a lot of people use that as well. And that, that makes it really nice, especially for in today's world where we're all on smartphones and iPods, where it, it makes it a lot easier to uh, you know, just get that email and, and go back to it as you need to. We, we talked about deleting all OK at the beginning of the script, which gets rid of all of those variables. And again, the variables, if you don't remember, don't know if I have any right now. Got a, Oh, we have the input variable. There you go. So that was that input variable we set up a second ago. The variables will delete at the end of a script or the beginning of a script. I like to do that. It just kind of cleans things out, makes it a lot cleaner for analysis purposes. And I think another thing that you didn't we didn't talk about today, and I, I just I put it in the the actual slides as well as an ACL script code that you can take a look at. This is how you delete the format and that format file is is well, it would have been over here. I deleted it though, but the format is your input file definition. And then the actual file, the .fil, delete sorted .fil, that will delete the file on your hard drive. Again, a little bit dangerous if, you know, don't, don't delete things without looking at it and testing your code. But all of these files were temporary files anyway, and I wanted to delete them. So it was perfect to, to include those as part of the delete commands. So I think as another best practice, I like to clean up afterwards and delete all my temporary files. I know somebody who puts TMP in front of all of these files when they're creating them up top here, you know, when they're doing all of their work up here. And I, I think that's great as well because it, it, 
very, very quickly allows you to identify what are all the temporary files that need to be deleted. And as we talked about, I think creating like a main menu script, like we did with this radio button here, the main menu, I mean, sure, uh, that, that main menu script, that one also I think is very useful in that it, it allows you to set up a overall script that, that calls the other scripts depending on what you want to do. You could do a radio button, a checkbox, you don't even need any of this stuff. I mean, you could just, we're going to delete all this stuff and say, well, do that script and then when you're done with that one do that script and when you're done with that one do this other script and you know so you can actually call a lot of scripts with that main menu script that you've set up 